There's nothing like experiencing music live and in person. But at this moment, stages are dark as the COVID-19 pandemic threatens the very existence of live music venues. On Destination Live Music Comeback Road, we're going inside some of West Michigan's favorite music spots to discover their rich histories, take a look behind the scenes, hear how the pandemic is affecting them, and how you, the fans, can show your support. Join us on the path to Destination Live Music Comeback Road, West Michigan. Somebody who's never been here before and they're really into live music, I'd say they're missing out. We've had some really fantastic bands, Grammy winners, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame members, lots of great local bands and touring bands. My name is Ted Smith. I am one of the owners of Tip Top Deluxe Bar and Grill here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. We are a small 140 capacity live music venue. Been in business for about nine years now. I do all the marketing and the booking for all the shows that we have here at the club. When you come to Tip Top, my vision for Tip Top really was to be a throwback to a classic kind of juke joint from the 1940s, 50s. I really like that mid-century period. Just wanted to have a very warm retro feel. The concert posters of the 40s, 50s, and 60s, I always thought were really cool. So I always wanted to have that look and feel for the shows here at Tip Top. And I found several great artists who, who make posters for me. Sometimes we're able to sell them at the shows and people are constantly stealing them off of the bulletin boards and out of the bathrooms and whatever. But uh, that's just a good thing, I guess. It means people like them. The music that I really chiefly think of when I think of Tip Top and, and what I'm looking for in the atmosphere, I just consider like American roots music, which can be country, can be blues, can be jazz, can be rockabilly but just something that is rooted in an earlier time period. I've been bringing shows into Grand Rapids for about 30 years now. I started obviously with bars that I didn't own. So this was just something that I had been developing for a long time before I had a space of my own to do this. I really love that period of music from the 1950s. You know, you look at any genre of music from that time period and I think it's all very high quality. You know, some of the greatest country music ever, the birth of rock and roll. We've brought in legendary blues artists like Lazy Lester, Maria Moldauer, personal favorites of mine such as Big Sandy and the Fly Right Boys, The Blasters, Low Straight Jackets, Wayne Hancock, Grammy winning artist Jim Lauderdale, uh, Dave Alvin. Really cool to get artists of that level in such a small bar in such an intimate setting. The bands we have on stage are not background to people. That's exactly why they're coming here. That's what their focus is on. We definitely are a destination. People are very enthusiastic about the music they're coming here to see. For me, the greatest part about booking a show and having shows happen here is when everything's going right, where I don't have the stress of am I losing money, where I know I'm, I'm already, you know, making money, the, the room is busy and packed, the, the band is on stage and having a great time and that interaction with the audience is there for the band. Um, and just when everything's really clicking, where everything just worked right. Where we are right now is um, basically since about March 16th, Tip Top has been closed down. Being a small bar, we can only make so much money and didn't just didn't have deep pockets to go into to keep paying the bills while we weren't having any income. So our fans, our, our audience really were very supportive and we raised a little over $8,000 through GoFundMe, which really helped keep us alive. And then I, I applied for several different grants, uh, most of which didn't get anything from. Uh, did end up getting one finally through the county and the city and then I had to pull a big chunk of money out of my own pocket to, to put in and just to, to keep everything going. So luckily we're at a point right now where we can still survive for a few months without being open. Um, but it, it's certainly difficult and it becomes stressful, you know, thinking how long is this going to go on. We are a member of NEVA, which is the National Independent Venue Association. And that's been a really great thing that's come together where all these small venues all across the country have one collective voice working for all of us. So we're really hoping that we'll be a little more powerful and getting some sway with uh, the Senate and the House to, to get some substantial aid passed and we are just a small mom and pop shop. We, we really do need some significant help. 
So anybody who wants to get involved with that or let your representatives know that you want to see venues like us continue, there's a hashtag on Instagram, Save Our Stages, or you can go to Neva's website, nevaassociation.org. One of the things I saw happen with a lot of bands and with other venues across the country when the whole shutdown first began was offering merch. So I decided to do that for Tip Top as well. I had some of the guys who've done posters for me come up with a few designs um, and tried to make them COVID related. So we've been very successful at selling all those shirts just as a fundraiser to, to get extra money for the club. It's really the only source of income we have coming in right now. We're selling those on Etsy. It's Tip Top GR at Etsy. So really at this point, we're just hoping that some real aid comes from the government that lets us know like, hey, we're not gonna let you just fail and go out of business. That when it's safe and you can do this, we're here for you. I mean, that's what we really need. The future of Tip Top right now, very hard to say. You know, we were among the first businesses that were shut down and we're gonna be among the last to reopen. We can hang on for a while, but still really, you know, fingers crossed that, that Neva is able to secure some, some aid through the federal government. So that's, that's really what we're counting on at this point. Right now, we still have a GoFundMe that's up and running that I started when the shutdown originally began. Fans can still contribute to that. And again, we do have shirts available for sale on Etsy. That way you get something back and we get something from it. Until some financial aid comes, it's just very uncertain what's gonna happen with places like Tip Top. We just can't pay the banknote indefinitely with no income. For the future, once we are able to reopen, I don't know how that's going to come about, whether it's gonna be phased with limited um, capacities initially. We'd love to see bands being able to go back out on the road and tour again and, you know, bring in the national talent that I think we're, we're really known for. But before that happens, we'd probably focus on the local bands and again on smaller groups, trios, duos, and keep it simple and just keep it as safe for our customers, the bands, and our staff as possible. Some kind of phased reopening with some financial aid is probably at this point the, the best hope that we have. So social media is probably the best way to keep track of where we're at. Hopefully one of these days have some good news for people. Really want to thank everybody who has helped so far. Um, everybody who donated through our GoFundMe. Um, everyone who's purchased a t-shirt through Etsy. Um, those things are still out there. So obviously you can, you can continue to donate. You can make virtual tips to our staff through Venmo. And again, you know, take, a, take the time, go to Neva and you know, let the local representatives know that you wanna see venues such as Tip Top receive some kind of help to ensure that we're able to reopen once it's safe. We really look forward to the opportunity to presenting live music. Yeah.